I want to make sure we address your amazing book, Knowing Where to Look, which I've already ordered three copies of. This is a kind of unconventional book. And I'll let you talk a little bit more about the writing process and how it's different from a normal book that we might pick up. Sure, yeah, I've been since 2016. So when I wrote my last book, Bliss More, How to Succeed in Meditation, it was my first book working with a publisher. I had done another book before that that I self-published. And it took me like three years to get, get it to a point where I felt like it was uh, professional enough to, to put out into the market. And so I was very insecure about my writing by the time I got the deal for the second book. And that's one of the secrets about the publishing industry is that you don't need to be a great writer to publish a book because they have ghost writers or they have editors that will work with you. So I was like contemplating, should I get a ghost writer? Because I really wanted this to be a, a fantastic read for people, you know, because I don't want to, I don't want to sacrifice these trees unless unless it's going to provide a lot of value to the world. And my agent talked me into just writing it myself. She says, look, you're a great writer. I read your other book, you know, and I did write that one on my own. And she said, you should just do it. So in an effort to practice my writing, I decided that I was going to start writing a daily email. And it became known as Light's Daily Dose of Inspiration. And it was just going to be a short little inspirational anecdote or story or parable. And that's the other thing I knew in my teaching stories really were, were that really got the most attention. Whenever you, I was lecturing to the class, you could see people's eyes glazing over. Whenever I said, let me tell you a story, everyone would perk up and be <laughs> super interested. So I just wanted to collect more stories that I could potentially use in my talks or in my lecture or my classes or my teaching. And uh, so I decided to, to use this daily dose of inspiration as an opportunity to either create personal stories or find uh, existing stories and put them in my own words and all of that. And I was obviously, you know, reluctant to make that commitment of every single day, rain, shine, traveling, sick, whatever, I'm going to send something out. But that was what I committed to. And I was afraid I was going to lose, I was going to run out of content after about a month. And I did after a month of doing it, I ran out of content, but then something really interesting started happening because I was showing up every day. I noticed that an idea would just come through sometimes not until the 11th hour, but it would always come through. Something always comes through. And uh, now I understand the mechanics of behind it, which is genera uh, create creativity generates creativity. If you invest in that for yourself, then you will start to experience more of that. But in any case, this was June of 2016 when I started. Now we're in um, 2021. So it's been almost five years. And I've written, I've, I've, I've emailed out over a thousand of these, which means each one is like, at least an hour, maybe two, sometimes five, six hours, right, of writing. And then, because writing it, writing a draft is the easiest thing in the world. But revising that draft into to a shape where it's going to be ready to send out is like, that can take a long time. And you learn how to do it better and better as the time goes on, but it still takes a lot of time. So literally, you know, well over 10,000 hours. <laughs> because for every one that I've sent out, I've probably written three oh, wow. that I didn't send out because they weren't, they just weren't in good enough shape to send them out. You know, some of them just- you write the one that was good enough. Is that right? You 100%, to, yeah. yeah. I had to write the first three yeah. to get to that fourth one that was the one I was right. gonna send out. <laughs> and then I may go back a couple months later and, and revisit some of the older ones and then say, oh, that's what it was missing. That's why it wasn't ready. And, I, and then that one is ready to go out. So I've got a, I got a whole archive of unpublished daily doses that never have seen the light of day that I'll go through when I'm looking for ideas. I'll just go through and read them and see if anything stands out or if I have any insight to complete it or things like that. So in any case, that is what turned into my current next book, Knowing Where to Look, 108 Daily Doses of Inspiration. So I've basically taken the, taken the greatest hits 
the ones that got the biggest response, plus some new ones, plus some revised ones, and I turned them into a book. So in one sense, it was the hardest book I ever had to write because it took the longest time when I was actually writing the original doses. But in the other sense, it was the easiest book I ever wrote because they were already essentially pre-written. And it's, it's meant to be uh, just like a pocket guide for inspiration. So, you know, when you go to a bookstore and you're perusing books, a lot of times you'll look at the cover and you go, oh, that's interesting title or whatever concept. And you pick it up and you flip it open to just some random page. And maybe something catches your eye. Maybe something doesn't catch your eye, right? But that will determine whether or not you buy the book. And usually if it's a great story that captures your imagination, then you'll buy that book or you'll at least consider buying the book. And you get home and what happens? You may read a couple chapters, you put it down and then you don't pick it up again ever. Or maybe you do pick it up again a year later. So very few people nowadays are reading a book straight through from beginning to end. And I'm in that category. I have tons of books that I haven't finished, right? I, I get it. So this book is really written to be, it's, it's, it's created to be read in spurts, right? And each story is a standalone piece of inspiration, just like the emails were. So you can literally flip it open to anything that catches your eye. And it's been very highly designed to um, reflect whatever the piece is about and also to just be eye-catching. And even if you want to cut it out and put it in your fridge or something like that, it's like each one is like a little postcard in and of itself. And, uh, but it's, it's meant to give you a little dose of inspiration and help you look at something in your life that you're going through a little bit differently in a way that could help you gain some new insight or new perspective and, and hopefully allow you to be able to move through that situation a little bit uh, with a little more clarity. So that's, that's the idea behind the book. And it doesn't matter if you, you don't need to read it from cover to cover because it's not written to be read that way. It's written to be literally flipped open to any page at any time. And, you know, if you get some, some uh, value out of that, then great. And if not, you flip to another page, you know, kind of like one of those magic crystal balls or something <laughs> that will give you, that will help you find answers within yourself. That's, that's the idea behind the book. My experience with your daily doses has been incredible. And I just want to share a personal one that really moved me, which is a few years ago, I wanted to try something that had been on my bucket list, which is running a marathon. So I ran the LA marathon and there was a daily dose that came into my mind. Like it was like Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars. Just like I could, I could hear it as I was running and feeling a lot of pain and, and my ankles were killing me, my calves, my shins were killing me. And I remember- Can I, can I daily... guess, can yeah. I guess yes, the one please. you're gonna go say? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> was it the one about running a mile, uh, a marathon in one mile 26 times? Yes, that's the one. So, so if I remember correctly, you had a friend who ran a marathon and you congratulated him saying, hey, congrats on running 26 miles. And your friend replied, oh, I only ran one mile 26 times. And I remember, man, as I was rounding into San Vicente and yeah, I think that was like mile 20 of 26 at that point, I was really starting to feel it. And I just remembered, oh, just do one more of these. And I got to mile 21, just one more. Just one more. And soon enough, I was on Ocean Avenue and I was heading toward the finish line. And soon enough, I had achieved this accomplishment that, you know, not too long earlier, I, I thought, I don't know how I'm going to make this. And I mm -hmm. think that's the power of your daily doses is sometimes you might read one and it gives you a good spark to the day. And that's great. And other times there will be ones that randomly pop into your head, maybe as you're shopping at the grocery store on an idle Tuesday, or maybe you're, you're doing something on your bucket list and it'll pop into your head and give you that extra fuel. I know it certainly did for me. So I encourage people to check out the book. And the beauty of it is everybody is going to find meaning in different daily doses at different points. Mm -hmm. You know, there mm -hmm. are some that I read once, maybe the first time you sent it out and I was like, okay, cool. And then the next time I was like, whoa, this is really resonating with me today because of this random thing I'm going through. So I encourage everybody to check it out. The marathon one is one that is just ingrained, burned in my head. Because it, mm -hmm. was, it was so helpful in, in achieving a goal that I'd been wanting to for so long. Yeah, and that's basically, those are the basic themes. It's like commitment, res resilience, determination, leaps of faith. <laughs> I talk a lot about following your heart, leaps of faith, and being 
um, open to new experiences and that kind of thing. So this is stuff that I think people grapple with on a daily basis because that's what I grapple with on a daily basis. I think people assume that I'm like, you know, floating around <laughs> on clouds or something all day, but I'm thinking about this stuff all the time, you know, and it's, it's yeah. given, it's given my, my um, day-to-day choices a lot more weight because yeah. you have to walk your talk. You know, you people, the reader can tell if you're actually living this stuff versus if you're just saying it because it sounds like a nice positive thought thing to say. And, uh, and I want it to be real. So. Yeah. And, and so many of these are stories from your own personal life which mm-hmm. I, I find refreshing and I think is really accessible because many people like me who might've been initially skeptical of meditation, words like angels and the divine to a skeptic, that's like, you know, confirmation bias, right? Um, so when people can kind of be engaged at first with things that are a little more, more accessible and relatable, I, I find that really cool. And then I can get to the, I can appreciate the angels and the divine once I, once I have a baseline understanding. <laughs> mm-hmm. 